Dante's Boxing Nation. Let's get into it. You know, a lot of fighters react and respond differently to being knocked out for the first time. Or sometimes even just knocked down for the first time. I mean, you have some fighters that can get knocked out and they can come right back and be the exact same fighter. Then you have other fighters that maybe they were maybe they were prideful warriors and brawlers and come come after you terminator type fighters like Marco Antonio Barrera, Daniel Ponce de Leon, right? And when they first got knocked out early in their career, it changed the complete way that they fought. They went from the bull to the matador. So in in their in their situations or their scenarios, they actually became smarter boxers. It may not be as entertaining, but they realize that, you know, fighting like a dumb fighter, it ain't going to do nothing but get your ass knocked out. Ask Antonio Margarito and Gulo and the rest of the game. Okay? So you have those type of, you know, people who get knocked out and come back that way. And then you have the fighter who gets knocked out and when he comes back he's not the same anymore because now that time that he got knocked out is always in the back of his mind he will never have the confidence that he used to have he has a great deal of fear when he's in the ring he feels I'm going to make sure that I do whatever it takes to make sure I don't get knocked out again. And see, usually people, they use that in a good way, where they fight harder, where they have a better defense. But see, in Vladimir Klitschko's situation, when he says, I'm going to make sure that I don't get knocked out ever again, he means I'm going to survive. He means I don't give a damn if I got a hold all night. I don't give a damn if I have to initiate jumping on this dude, holding him, pushing his head down. I don't give a damn what it takes. I am going to survive. And that's exactly the weak state of mind that Vladimir Klitschko is in today. Vladimir Klitschko, he would rather survive than dominate. He would rather survive than knock someone out. You know, he's, he's only really trying to do one thing, Vladimir is. He's trying to catch you with the right hand. And if you get past that right hand, Klitschko goes right into survival mode. See, this is the thing. Everybody clinches to a certain extent. I don't think I've ever seen a, a top-notch fighter that has never gotten a clinch. Some just do it way more than others. You know, you, take, you could take uh, Floyd Mayweather, for example. When you fight Floyd Mayweather, what does Floyd Mayweather do when he has a, an aggressive, powerful fighter? You know, throwing hooks, trying to go on the inside and throw hooks to the body. You know what You know what Floyd does? Floyd, he gets in that Philly shell and he catches you with uppercuts. He gets in the Philly shell, he rolls the right hand. He, he, or he'll get into a regular guard, put his hands up high, and he'll catch you with a counter left hook. He'll fight you in the inside. Or he'll just block the punches, right? But... When have you ever seen, how often have you ever seen Floyd Mayweather just leap at somebody like they were trying to catch their ass, leap at somebody and just be laying on their fucking neck and pushing them down? You, you seldomly ever see Floyd Mayweather do that. You may, like I said, you may see Floyd tie up every now and then, but you never see him relying on tying someone up. And, and, and the majority of good boxers you don't see doing this. You know why? Because Floyd Mayweather, that's not, holding is not part of his strategy. Holding may be something that, you know, may be implemented occasionally, very quick. And it, like I said, especially if you look at the Canelo Alvarez fight, both fighters, they were both clinching, right? Matter of fact, I watched that fight a gang of times already. Canelo was actually clinching more than Floyd Mayweather was. And I have, the, I have all the pictures to prove it. But the point that I'm making is neither Canelo or Floyd Mayweather, neither one of them were clinching to just survive the whole night. And that's what Vladimir Klitschko was doing. Because Vladimir Klitschko, 
he is always thinking in his head, just like he's thinking right now in this picture you're looking at, I am not going to get knocked out again. The only other fighter who I can think of that clinches as much as Vladimir Klitschko does, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people who clinch, but I'm saying on this level, because this is a whole nother level, the only fighter I could think of is John Ruiz, former heavyweight champion John Ruiz. And you know what's so interesting? John Ruiz, his situation is the exact same as Vladimir Klitschko. You see, long, long time ago, John Ruiz, he got knocked out. And ever since he got knocked out, he had never been the same. Before John Ruiz got knocked out, when he was, because he used to be undefeated, before he had got knocked out, he was an aggressive fighter. He never clinched. When he got knocked out, that's when he transformed himself into a clinch and hold, just survive type fighter. Okay? So, nevertheless, man, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, he should have been disqualified. He should have had at least one or two points deducted. The referee should have did his fucking job because that's what, you, that's what you're there for. You're there to make sure that people don't fucking completely abuse something that's already illegal. And that's exactly what Klitschko did. They allowed him to get away with it. He should have been deducted and he, did, he should have been disqualified. All right? Vladimir Klitschko is not a fucking great champion. Now, his brother Vitaly is a far better fighter. He has far more heart. But, uh, you know, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, he really, really lacks heart. He has no chin. And, you know, he freaks out when he fights. He freaks out. That's what he does. He panics. Because that's the only thing that he's thinking about is don't get knocked out. Don't get knocked out. That's the only thing he's thinking about. So with that out the way, let's go ahead and let's get into the commentary of how Vladimir Klitschko was treated by the extreme bias ass HBO's Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman. You know, guys, it took me a while to make this video because I, I read, I was reading some of the comments on um, the video that I just made uh, with HBO racist a bias towards Terrence Crawford because they treated him like complete fucking shit, which really surprised me because, like I said in my video, everyone was saying that, you know, they can't, you know, Jim Lampley, he can't be racist. They like Terrence Crawford. They was all saying that before this fight. But that shit turned out to be completely fucking false because. Terrence Crawford, he finally got thrown in that same boat that Rigo, Floyd Mayweather, Tim Bradley, and any other black fighter that's on HBO has been treated. So yeah, it took me a little bit longer to make this video because I was reading the messages and like I told you guys before, I'm trying my best to refrain from responding to dumbass comments. You know, I'll, I'll respond every now and then to people who make sense and they don't even have to agree with me. But at least if it's on the lines of something professional, you know, then I, I could kind of respond to that. But if it's just some some stupid ass cheerleading dumbass shit that obviously suggests that you just hate this person or, or you're defending this person. I'm not trying to waste my time on people like that. So anyway, there was a small percentage, like there always is, of people who were saying, oh, well, they can't be racist because they treated, uh, they criticized and treated Vladimir Klitschko worse than they treated Terrence Crawford. I says, really? So what I did before I made this video is I went back and I watched the whole fight to listen to the commentary, which was very agonizing, by the way. I wouldn't advise anybody who really wants, who really loves boxing to sit down and listen to these motherfuckers talk through a whole fucking fight being as biased as they are, right? Because when I first watched this fight, it, you know, was so dreadful to me after all the clinching and shit, you know, thank God I had DVR because I think after about six or seven rounds, I just fast forward the shit. I fast forward the shit to the end, you know, to see if anyone got knocked out to see what the, de the decision was, okay? So right now, I just finally watched the whole thing and I'm listening to the commentary and this is funny to me. It's funny to me, first, before I even tell you what I heard in the commentary, it's funny to me, or it's a damn shame maybe I should say, why is it these small percentage of haters that come onto my videos and everyone else's videos, you know, these are the same people who see all these racist ass comments on YouTube, right? 
And they don't say anything when they see these comments. Like somebody remind me, you go to, you know, um, e, um, ES News, Elliot Setback's channel, and they have some of the most racist comments towards black people, right? But see, these people who come on like my video, you know, they don't have any problem with those racist ass comments, okay? But why is it, soon as they see a video where someone is talking about racism towards blacks, that's when they get upset. That's when they take a stand. That's when they want to defend HBO. They're not racist. They just don't like this guy because he's this way, because he's that way. But, but when they see racist comments, they don't ever send them a message and say, come on, man, stop playing the race card. They don't do that, right? So anyway, to the, back to the commentary. So in the commentary, I, I'm, I'm listening to the commentary, and it's crazy because while people were trying to say they were protecting, they were, I'm sorry, they were criticizing Vladimir Klitschko, that's a motherfucking lie. That's the opposite of what they were doing. What they were doing in that whole fucking fight, Jim and Max, they were defending Vladimir Klitschko. They were defending him. I remember, I, I, like I said, I just watched it. You know, Max Kellerman, he had the nerve to say, you know, and he just openly just came out and said this while no one was even talking. He said, well, you know, there's been a lot of dirty fighters in the sport of boxing. Evander Holyfield, Bernard Hopkins, and Vladimir Klitschko is no exception. And, and, and um, it was funny because uh, Roy Jones, he just bust up laughing and he didn't even say nothing. He didn't respond. He just laughed about it. And then Jim Lampley, he said Preventikiv is tired and he's most likely tired because Klitschko has been leaning on his back the whole night. You know, so you think he's about to criticize Klitschko pretty heavily. But then he goes into defending Klitschko and says, and you know what? I think that's clever for, for uh, Vladimir Klitschko to keep... To keep doing that over and over, I think that's clever. That's a clever strategy. And remember, like I just told you in my previous video featuring uh, Terrence Crawford, I told you guys that Roy Jones, he wants to say, he wants to say certain things, but he's afraid of the backlash from, from Jim Lampley and Max and having to argue with them. I know this is the case because I notice sometimes uh, Roy Jones, he'll let someone else bring something up and then he'll speak on it. Because it's almost like he said, oh, okay, so it's okay for me to talk about this because they're talking about it. Like with Max Kellerman in the sixth round, Max Kellerman said, okay, now the clinching is starting to get to the point where maybe the referee should start warning uh, Vladimir Klitschko. And then that's when Roy Jones, you could tell he was already thinking it because Roy Jones said, well, yeah, well, yeah, I've been thinking that for a while already. And then Max, he goes into defending Vladimir Klitschko more and say, well, but... But, you know, the clinching just started. And I'm sitting over here shaking my head. I'm saying to myself as they're talking, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's been doing this shit since round one. And then as soon as I said that, Roy Jones like, no. Actually, he's been doing this shit since round one. And let me tell you something. When you're fighting in Europe and the crowd starts to boo you, you are really fucking stinking up the joint. Because you guys have to understand, Europe... They respect the sweet science far more than we do. And not only that, but they are just more respectful fans. And they were booing Vladimir Klitschko. But see, when they were booing Vladimir Klitschko, you didn't hear Jim Lampley and Max say, this, this fight stinks. I can't wait for this fight to be over. Boy, it can't be over soon enough. And et cetera, et cetera. They never said this shit. You know what they did when, when Terrence was fighting? When Terrence was fighting... They actually, when, when the crowd booed, of course, that egged them on to, to talk even worse about Terrence Crawford, right? But when Terrence Crawford got aggressive and he got real aggressive, the crowd stopped booing. And you know what Jim said? Jim said the crowd is not booing anymore because they're tired of booing. But he didn't say this shit in the Vladimir Klitschko fight. How do you guys explain this? How do you guys explain two fights, two fights that are not that stellar, Two fights that elicit boos, and yet Jim and Max, they only criticize Terrence for being boring. But you know what's interesting? The real journalists on the boxing websites, they got all kind of articles clowning the shit out of Vladimir's performance. There's one headline that reads, that's not, and not as under a parenthesis, that's not boxing. They got another one that's, uh, that says something like, um, that's what you call shit boxing. And another one, uh, Vladimir defeats Provetnikov in a clinch fest. How come we didn't hear this from Jim and Max, but we heard it when they was talking about Terrence? 
because Terrence, he ain't got the complexion for the protection. I'm on to the next one.